Okay, next talk. Uh, we are now going to learn how to bootstrap a brand new Hackspace. Hello, hi everyone. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, um, welcome to one of the last talks here. Sad. Um, I'm Malias Srebrnic. Um, I work as an embedded developer. And I'm one of the founders of Mitelab, which is my hackerspace in Trieste, Italy. Uh, and, and I'm one of the INOC guys, so I um, do the network stuff. Uh, Mitelab is a, a medium-sized, I would say, um, hackerspace in Trieste. It was founded in 2016. Um, we have 70 members, of which 20 members show up regularly. Um, what are we? What are, what I'm going to? What what I'm going to try to explain to you um, is I'm going to start with a very brief introduction introduction to hackerspaces. I'm guessing everyone here knows what a hackerspace is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, well, mainly this talk is about not trying to reinvent the wheel. So uh, reuse standard software uh, that is already there. Uh, with slight modifications in order to get everything to talk to everything and integrate stuff without much effort. And I'm going to explain uh, basically what we did at MitLab, so uh, which software we choose and how are we dealing with communicating effectively and um, collaborating. I'm not going to talk about design patterns. Um, if you want to see a talk about design patterns, well, uh, there's another talk that I did at Besides Ljubljana. Uh, you should check out that, or there is the talk introducing hackerspace design patterns, and that can be found on the website um, hackerspaces.org. Uh, I'm not gonna, um, this is not a general guidebook on how to start a hackerspace, uh, because that would take certainly more than 30 minutes. Uh, and it's not a free IPA or SAM tutorial, although I will explain a little bit what SAM is. So, uh, what's a hackerspace? Uh, this is a highly discussed topic, and everyone is very sensitive about this. Um, a, a definition that I, um, that I found out on uh, IRC uh, was, uh, well, if your kid is into sports, uh, you bring him to a soccer club or um, baseball club or whatever. Uh, if he likes tech, uh, then you're going to bring him to a hackerspace. Um, another definition that I like uh, very much is that a hackerspace is the sum of its members. And why is that? Uh, a hackerspace is usually a physical place where people meet, and these people have interests, so they um, have stuff they like to do, and those interests usually defines what kind of projects are done in that space. So, uh, people are going to be interested in electronics, you're going to do electronic stuff, and that actually defines what kind of equipment uh, is available or is going to be bought by the, the community. So, hackerspace is a group of people. And that is very important. Uh, another thing that is very important is how do people collaborate in a group? So um, in order to um, collaborate efficiently uh, inside a group of people, uh, especially if they're not already present uh, in the same space, or some are remote, or some are just not present that day, you need communication. Um, people need to talk to each other uh, as simply as possible. And um, right in this day, day and age of Slack and um, IM and stuff like that, it's, it seems obvious, but it's really not that obvious uh, how to communicate effectively. Um, there needs to be some coordination. Uh, so people um, need to know what needs to be done, who uh, took the charge of, uh, of doing it, and um, usually when needs to be done, what's the deadline. Uh, and afterwards, and this is also very important, um, and as you know, programmers, we're usually bad at this, uh, documentation. Um, what was done, how was done, and how can people uh, recreate it? So um, what's, what we found out uh, is uh, in order to communicate, um, there really needs to be three levels of communication. Uh, there needs to be a day-to-day -day communication, uh, you know, where you can post the latest, me latest memes, uh, you can ask if the space is open, uh, if anyone is there, uh, what are they doing, and things that uh, need uh, or usually warrant a quick response. 
There needs to be a place where people can communicate uh, important stuff, like announcements, um, new projects, general discussion that you know um, has to have an attention span which is longer than you know, the couple of pages that one usually reads uh, in, a, in an IM program. Finally, there needs to be a reference, so uh, things get 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 discussed. Um, there's there is a decision, and then this decision has to be recorded. And this thing has to be really easily accessible, really a couple of links away. Uh, you don't have to wade through screens and screens of forum discussion in order to uh, reach the final conclusion. And this is the three um, levels, basically, uh, that uh, this is the community pattern. Uh, if, you, if you see the community pattern on um, hackerspaces.org, this is basically it. Right, uh, so you decided a couple of, couple of things. Uh, now, the couple of things needs to get done, actually. Uh, the first and simplest approximation of getting it done is using a to-do list. This is easy, I uh, just need to write down in a pad, Etherpad, Google Sheet, whatever. Um, you, you, you write down what needs to be done, who uh, needs to do it, and by when, if that's applicable. And this is it. Uh, the problem is, uh, a Google Sheet or uh, an Etherpad doesn't really scale that well. Um, if you have 40 people collaborating uh, on the same thing, uh, you're going to have problems with that. Uh, so what do you need is basically a project management software. Uh, this is kind of heavy because usually these things are really difficult to use. Uh, so really it has to, has to have low friction has to be, of course, multi-user because um, multiple people are going to use it. And it has to have multi-project capabilities uh, because you don't really... Um, there is some software like Redmine and stuff like that uh, that usually has only one project and you don't really want to deploy another instance for everything that you want to do. Right, so we have a discussion forum and we have a wiki or some way to store documentation and we have uh, something to collaborate with. And this is already three accounts, so this quickly devolves into, an, into a madness where the poor IT volunteers need to um, reset passwords daily and um, deal with, generally deal with users. Um, this is another thing that doesn't scale really well. Um, so what you're really going to need is some kind of central authentication system. Um, this has to be simple to use. Because um, really, um, people in hackerspaces, they're not, um, not everyone is tech aware. Uh, you're going to have artists, you're going to have um, people that really don't know what a GPG key is. Um, so this thing has to be easy to use, and it has to be relatively simple to deploy. Uh, because again, uh, IT people are volunteers and are going to do this in, free, in their free time. Uh, if if people are, have to you know, work on it for months and months uh, in order to get it done, it, it just won't get done. Right, um, so how did we solve this? Uh, we had a couple of, we, we chose a couple of constraints. We set a couple of constraints at Mitelab when we um, started looking for software that could do all these things for us. Uh, it was, this was um, well, a year and a half ago now. Um, it has to be open source, of course. It has to be self-hosted uh, because we wanted to, um, you know, not get um, attached to any kind of software as a service or uh, external service. We want to be in charge of um, our, our own downtimes, um, and it of course, it has to be easy to use. Um, and uh, what we finally settled on uh, choosing is this. Um, so we have for the three layers of communication, we have Telegram and RSC for day-to-day uh, -day communication. We have this course uh, for important stuff. We have the wiki uh, for um, reference. For coordination, we chose Camboard, which is um, which we're going to see uh, a couple of slides later. For documentation, uh, we chose both both GitLab and uh, DocWiki. And for authentication, we actually started out with LDAP, and we then moved to SAML, which is way way better. Right, instant messaging. Um, I think uh, everyone knows Telegram. Uh, it's pretty popular. Uh, it uh, well, the protocol is open source. The backend is not, but you know, got to deal with some <laughs> um, 
We could have deployed, for example, Mattermost is, an, is another thing, but the thing is, uh, you, you, you need to start using something that people actually, actually use. Um, what we needed, though, was uh, bot support. Um, and, of course, we also chose IRC, um, mainly because there was some people who refused to come on Telegram, um, but also because uh, IRC is very direct. You don't need an account, you don't need um, a phone number, you don't need to set a password. Um, it can be linked to, so you just set, uh, use the free node web chat. Uh, you just basically have a link that auto joins you in a channel, more or less. Well, you, have, you have to choose a uh, nickname, if, if I recall correctly. But basically, this is um, from our website. You just click a link, and you can chat with, with us. It also has bots. Uh, why is this important? Uh, because we actually um, found a bot that can synchronize, synchronize a conversation both via Telegram and IRC. So basically, this um, grabs a message from Telegram, put it, puts it on IRC, and vice versa. Um, it's a bot based on Liminoria, uh, which is uh, itself a fork of Supibot, which is an IRC bot. And it has a plugin, which is called uh, Supibot Telegram Bridge, um, that can connect uh, both services together. We made some pull requests, so now it supports uh, multiple channels, multiple groups. Um, and this is, yeah, um, how we gave back to the community. Uh, what do we use it for? Uh, we use it for a hackerspace status, so we have a command, which is unfortunately right now manual. Um, so people can interrogate if the space is open or not. Um, it has a command to uh, set the keys, so uh, people know who has the keys and who to pester if the space is not open yet at the set hour. In the future, we really want to add MQTT support in order to uh, make the open-close status uh, automatic and, you know, to interrogate some parameters like temperature in the server room or stuff like that. Communication. Um, it's a discourse instance. Um, it's pretty powerful, uh, although it's Ruby on Rails, which I don't personally like. Um, and uh, the official installation is only via Docker, which is another thing that I don't personally like. Uh, but the nice thing is has, it has a mailing list mode. So uh, the debate is um, the old school people are, prefer email and asynchronous communication um, in this way. Um, so this finally uh, doesn't give them the excuse of, oh, I won't use a forum because that's too new for me, I'll prefer a mailing list. Uh, if you do like mailing list, you just click on the, on the button and every post is gonna come to your inbox. So this is a nice way to you know, integrate both um, um, young people and the old school people. Um, what, do we, what do we put there? Uh, we put new projects, uh, we put people who look for help. Uh, that's because um, usually um, if you just write in the Telegram group, uh, you're not going to get that much responses, and once you know it gets past the first screen, nobody's going to read it anymore. Um, we have events, uh, events and workshop announcements. Uh, that is also a separate category, uh, and we have general discussion between members, so anything goes. And this is basically what we um, need our uh, forum for. Uh, then we have Kanboard, which is um, mainly used uh, by the uh, board. It is multi-user, has groups and permission. It, can, it will handle multiple projects. Uh, it is a little bit hard to get because that's, that's project management software. Uh, but it is pretty simple. So um, if you see the, um, these are the columns, uh, ready, work in progress, done. You just click on the plus and you add a task. So this is pretty pretty low friction. Uh, moreover, it has GitLab, GitLab integration, uh, so you can uh, link a task here to an issue on GitLab, and that is also uh, convenient. Speaking about GitLab, um, you probably um, already know what it is. It uses Ruby on Rails again. Um, we don't use it only for code or for our projects. We, only, we also use it for minutes for meetings. Uh, this is pretty convenient since um, every uh, new uh, meeting has a pull request and then everyone, or merge request, and then everyone can comment on that merge request and uh, request changes and add stuff, and then it gets merged. Um, of course, we use GPT signatures uh, since um, that, is, that is actually important, uh, since the, the meetings are official. Um, 
We use it for hardware projects, so uh, all our KiCad uh, boards get uploaded there. Uh, we have a special category for uh, our, libra uh, our library and uh, our templates. And we also use it for uh, server configuration, so um, that is also something that is auto-documenting in kind of sense. So uh, the, document is, um, the configuration is there if you need to replicate it, uh, if the virtual machine gets broken or whatever, just clone the repo and uh, reinstall. Last but not least, uh, it's our wiki. Uh, doc, it's based on DocWiki, which is a normal run-of-the-mill flat file wiki. Uh, the good thing is it has a lot of plugins, uh, so you can customize it pretty much however you want. Um, here we do put our events, our projects, so uh, project documentation goes here. Uh, workshops, so a detailed description of workshops goes here. Uh, the, um, the infrastructure documentation, so how we did everything that is running on our servers, uh, goes there. And also the roles. Uh, roles are kind of special for Metalab. Uh, we have a couple of um, roles with, um, with a backup. So, for example, the internal authentication guy, uh, which is me, has a backup. The external authentication guy, the, uh, sorry, internal infrastructure guy. Um, external infrastructure guy, then we have uh, a role for uh, media managing, uh, we have a role for event, event planning, um, and every role, role is documented and usually has an email address associated to it. And this is our wiki. Um, now, for central authentication, the first version we did was um, used LDAP. Uh, this is not ideal, uh, required a couple of custom Python scripts uh, to add members and to synchronize members with uh, our CRM. And basically not, was not really that secure. Um, so we, were, we, we looked around uh, and we finally found another software, um, which is way, way, way better, um, which is called Free IPA, and can do all of these things and much more. So Free IPA is a software that um, can will authenticate your users, will enable you to set policies for which users accesses which machine or serv service, and it will have um, a log uh, for security purposes. So this is the um, the base, and it is really not a monolithic software. It's composed of um, little small pieces, which is an LDAP server, um, Kerberos, DNS and it has a PKI, so uh, all our uh, internal certificates are issued using this, uh, this system. It finally, it's, I think it's the only software, LDAP-based software, uh, that is not Microsoft, I guess, because I didn't check that, um, that has a nice user interface, uh, and by nice I mean at least usable. Um, it has a pretty powerful uh, command, command line interface, you can access all the IPs. Actually, uh, this is one of the instances where the command line interface is actually more powerful than the, the web UI. It's written in Python, so it's something that we already know. Um, and it's pretty extensible. You can add your own uh, LDAP uh, object classes if you want. You can manage them in the UI. And so it's pre pretty custom customizable uh, like this. What can actually be done with free IPA? Um, well, um, it's an authentication system, so basically um, your imagination is the limit. Uh, what do we use it for? Uh, we use it for RADIUS, WPA Enterprise, um, so uh, the same set of uh, username password that can authenticate you to our external services, can authenticate you to our um, Wi-Fi. Um, we use it for Netbox, which is uh, another good piece of software for documenting your um, IP addresses and racks and whatnot. Uh, it's used uh, for authenticating the users to a set of common computers that we have that are um, for free use for, for everyone. Um, it is used for our external VPN authentication and um, via Kerberos um, to auto mount home users' home directories so they can um, you know, work on a file, then move to another common computer, and the file is already going to be there. And uh, of course, it integrates with Epsilon, which is another piece of software that we're going to see in a couple of slides, uh, and that powers our SAML access to all our external services. In the future, 
uh, what we like to add is in an, integ an integration with our physical access system uh, that we're currently building. So there's going to be that also. Uh, right, so has, give me a shout if anyone has heard about SAML. Right, a couple of hands. Uh, right, it's um, initialism, stands for security assertion markup language. Uh, it can be used for single sign-on, well, it is used for single sign-on. Um, and it's usually based, about, uh, based around our one centralized entity uh, for authentication and authorization, which is called identity provider, and multiple services that authenticate, uh, authenticate to it, which are called service providers. And usually the, the sequence is, well, um, um, a user agent, in, the user in this case, requ um, requests a resource from the service provider. Uh, the service provider redirects him to the identity provider. There the user can actually log in with his credentials. And uh, in, the, in the response, um, there's going to be a SAML, a SAML response packet. And this is actually what gets forward to, um, well, signed and forward to um, the service provider. And uh, the service provider then can use this to authenticate and extract information of the user in order to authenticate him in the system. And this is basically what um, Y does. Uh, it's a small project written in Python. Uh, it uses SSSD, which is the, um, the daemon that extracts information from free, uh, from free IPA. Uh, it supports um, double authentication, so you can either authenticate via uh, password form or you can use Kerberos. And it works pretty much like that. So the users uh, authenticate to the IDM uh, via a login plugin. This is the password form or Kerberos. Uh, method, but this is extensible, so you can actually add your own if you want. Then you have the information plugin, um, which decides which information is going to pass through uh, to the service provider. And finally, you have the authorization plugin, uh, which actually uh, checks if the user if is authorized to access that resource or not. Right, how does this uh, integrate inside our external services? Um, for this course, there's a, an official plugin, which is called Discourse Sum. Uh, this works, the login works, and groups also work. Um, so we use, uh, have a couple of groups. Um, for example, there's the members group, which all members are part of, and that gives access, for example, on Discourse to the members-only um, discussion area. Uh, so that works automatically. Um, you can find it on, on GitHub, GitHub, of course. For Comboard, um, the doesn't work like I want it to. Um, so login works, groups don't really, um, because they, they do some assumption. Uh, well, the plugin was, was made from um, the one that does LDAP authentication and that relies on some mechanisms that are not available with SAML. So that, that's not ideal, but we're working on it. We actually um, already submitted some pull requests uh, for that, um, and that's going to be fixed soon, hopefully. Uh, for GitLab, uh, the support is um, integrated inside, baked right in the Omnibus package. Uh, login works. Uh, group sync is currently a work in progress on GitLab side. Um, so that is not working yet. That requires manu manual intervention. And lastly, for DocuWiki, there is a plugin that does everything. It was the first that actually worked out of the box. Uh, right, so this is how everything goes together. Uh, the last thing is, uh, of course, the users. Um, for a while, we searched uh, the whole internet um, for a self-service user panel. Uh, and finally, we found Mocky, uh, which is um, done by a uh, university. Uh, it supports user first, first account activation, so with a simple command, I can send an automatically generated email to a user saying, hey, welcome to Mitelab. Uh, here is the link to um, set your password and then log into these services to enable your account. Um, users can easily add one-time password tokens, uh, so that is also um, pretty simple to use. Uh, they can upload their SSH keys. Um, of course, the service itself has uh, cu um, customizable templates, so you can style it however, however you want. Uh, it also has uh, PGP-MIME signed emails if you want. 
and uh, it actually uh, right that was that's old. It actually was in installed and tested and actually works um, well. We um, sent some pull requests and um, this is written in Go, uh, which is which was a new language to um, learn and submit another pull request to, but uh, we managed to do that. Uh, and this is basically uh, everything that that we need. Um, so we were pretty pretty happy about that. Um, how did this um, actually run on? Uh, we have a dedicated server for uh, DocWiki. Uh, sorry, we have a dedicated server for uh, GitLab and Discourse, which is the biggest server that we have since you know Rust, um, Ruby on Rails, and Postgres usually eat up a lot of RAM. Uh, and we have two VPS, one is, one is for self-service and one is our uh, free IPA outside replica. Uh, for internal stuff, we have a um, bunch of hardware uh, that runs a couple of virtual machines with free IPA and uh, NAS storage for um, the home directories. Um, since we have a little time, um, I wanted to talk um, about uh, SpaceNet. Um, have you, has anyone here heard about SpaceNet? Arms up. Yay, hooray. Right, SpaceNet is um, its actually also active here at EMF. Um, it's a federated network, something like EdRoam, if you heard about it. Um, multiple uh, hackerspaces can participate, and it gives you um, a login with your credentials uh, on every hackerspace that actually participates to that. Uh, and also events like this one, or CCC, or CC Camp, um, or SHA. Uh, that was also covered by um, by SpaceNet, and of course it's um, reasonably secure because it uses tunnel TLS, um, and it is privacy conscious because you use an anonymous identity to do the first login to your server, uh, so uh, your username is actually not used uh, outside the tu the secure tunnel with your server. Um, moreover, there's also Space SAML, uh, which is federated SAML login. Um, this is Kind of a work in progress. I've um, talked to Wilco uh, about this. So um, there are, it's already deployed at a couple of hackerspaces. But uh, what needs to be done is uh, they need to set up some kind of automated system to um, um, make joining uh, other domains more uh, more easy. Uh, and another thing about um, membership management, uh, what we use um, is Triton. Uh, this is a Python-based <laughs> CRM. It's pretty easily extendable. It, it is a little bit complicated to get into because you have to um, know the basic um, accounting keywords uh, in order to use it. But this is what we use to um, have a database of members, uh, which is required by law in Italy. Um, we set up uh, fees, recurrent fees, and um, manage all the finances uh, out of space. Um, it's nice because it has an API, so you can actually embed it in another website, uh, and this is what we what we plan to do. Uh, so what we plan, what we what we are planning to do is um, some kind of self service management uh, for the members, so um, each aspiring member can actually um, and can actually um, request a membership or terminate it if it doesn't want um, anymore uh, to be a part of MeetLab anymore, uh, and. Another thing that we want to do is integrate NFC. And that is it. Thank you. So since there probably not, do we have some time for questions or? Yep, yep, we do. Awesome. Thank you. If there are any. How long have you been running the hackerspace? Um, how, how long I've been running a hackerspace? Um, well, since its inception, I think. So three years. Another question in the back. Hi. Do you have any solution for uh, inventory and asset management? Uh, Physical assets. Yeah, um, actually, I do. Do you mean like um, servers and stuff, or actually like boxes and um, tools and stuff like that? All right. Um, we are currently working on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, this is another thing. I, I've actually, I didn't find, I haven't found anything about th that that is, you know, reasonably standard and not really integrated in other stuff that other hackerspaces has. Uh, I haven't found anything yet 
so what we wanted to do uh, is start building something that is abstract enough in order to get it integrated uh, easily in other people's stuff. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, if, let me think about it. It actually is, I think. It's, our, it's on our Git, which is git.meetalab.org. Uh, right. Oh, the question for the recording. Uh, the last question was, "Is it public yet?" And uh, it is. So, cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to discuss more about this, uh, you can find me in the West, Lost, West London Hackers Village, or uh, we could meet up at this exit and probably go to the youth uh, youth workshop, which is, I think, it's unoccupied. Unoccupied. I really want to discuss a little bit about this. Thank you. Thank you.